The floor is lava! Ah! So today we're gonna add the possibility to have different types of ground in the pathfinding. And that means that by the end, we're gonna have tiles that cost more, tiles that cost less, and tiles that are only available for some specific types of units. So for example, if you have a hole in the ground, maybe only a flying unit can go through. Or let's say maybe you have a lake of lava with some monster that can swim in it. So let's get to it. So we're gonna start by adding the types of ground we want to add in the game. And this is inside the enum in core grid, grid utility and e-type type right here. And since I don't have that much imaginations, I simply named them a double cost, triple cost and flying units only. So now we have a type of ground that will cost double, a type of ground that will cost triple and a type of ground that will be only accessible by units that are able to fly. Okay, perfect, we're done here. We can close the enum. And now that the enum is updated, we are able to go in the level square, let's say, and then I can duplicate one of the grid modifiers that I already had. So copy paste that one and I'm going to move it uh, somewhere right here. Doesn't matter for now. And now right here in the bottom right corner, if I select my volume, I can change the type. So I'm going to make it double cost. And in this case, I want this section right here to be double cost. So I will adjust the scale and everything so it fits with that section. Perfect, just like that. Now I'm going to do the same thing and duplicate this volume and this time I'm going to make it above this zone right here, which I'm going to make a triple cost. So I'm going to change the volume to a triple cost and then I'm going to adjust it so it fits with the ground under it. There we go, now it's placed properly, but we now have a little problem. This is a double cost and that one is a triple cost, but the colors are the same. So let's go fix that real quick. I'm gonna open my grid modifier. And the colors are just right here. So I'm just going to change them to something that is a little bit more visible. Okay, done. So I changed the double and triple cost. So they are a tint of brownish, orange, brownish. And the flying units, I made it a purple. And now if we go back in entry, we should now have different colors for both volumes. Yeah, that one is a little bit a lighter orangish and that one is a bit more brown. And now if I duplicate that one and paste it right here, and I, let's say I want to make this zone right here, the hole, I want to make it a flying unit only. So I will change the type to flying unit only. Here we go. Now it's a purple and I can align it with the ground under it. So I'm going to scale it again. Here we go. And actually for that one, I will also make it a little bit lower. So it's at the same exact level as the rest of the ground. So I'm going to make it to zero because in my case, everything else it has zero. So now my plane right here is at the same exact level as everything else. Perfect. And I'm really just doing that because the volume right here doesn't have any ground under it. So we're gonna use the height of the volume. So right now at the same level as the rest of the level to determine where we want to place the tile above it. Okay, good. Now it's time to do the exact same thing for all the grid shapes. And I'm actually going to also add a few more volume in this one because I have a hole right here that I want to add a volume there. I have a hole right here, another one there. So uh, I'm going to see you in 30 seconds when I'm done placing everything. Okay, good, we're done. Now we can press play and see if it broke something or not. Uh, I'm going to generate the grid base on the environment. Okay, good. Uh, okay, we can see that we have uh, new tiles right here, right there for uh, the holes because it detected my volume, so that's good. The other ones, we don't really see uh, the difference, but whatever, let's assume that it works. But for these, I actually have to show you something because I don't think it really worked the way I want it to work. I'm going to press stop. And now if I move my volume a little bit up and then press play again, I'm going to generate based on the environment, the tiles are at the same height. But in this case, I would like to be able to adjust the height of the tiles based on the height of the volume. Uh, in this case, it doesn't really matter because we want it to be aligned with the ground. But right now it only works because the whole ground of the level is at the height zero, which means that if we uh, have a higher level, it won't work at all. So now in this case, I'm just going to uh, change the line trace a little bit. So it uses the volume to determine the height of the grid. And the first thing we're going to change is in the grid modifier. I'm just going to add another variable right here. I renamed it to use for tile height. It is still a boolean and I'm going to check the little high on the side. That way we are able to set it in the editor. Now I will compile and go back in the level. And then I will select all my volumes that are uh, for the flying units only. So this, this, and this one. And I will check the new checkbox. So use for tile height. 
And now let's go use that checkbox. So I'm gonna go in my grid and open BP grid. And I will go inside the grid generation and in the trace foreground function right here at the end. And I'm adding a branch right here to check the value of my boolean. So use a four tile height right here. And if it's true, well, we want to use the height of the tile for the return Z right here. But right now it's not really pretty. So I will just move the return Z at the end, add a reroute node right here, and maybe add another one right there. So it's a little bit more straight. And I think that's good enough for it to work. So I'm gonna compile it and go test it. I'm gonna press play and uh, now, oops, I'm gonna go back in my level, move my volume a little bit above just so we can see the difference. Now I'm going to check my generate grid based on the environment and we can see that the ground goes a little bit higher when we are over that volume. So perfect, it goes exactly at the height of the volume. Perfect. But here, let's see what happens. I just added a bridge under the volume. So I have my volume right here and I have a bridge under it. So now I'm going to press play again. And now if I generate my grid based on the environment, let's see. Okay, uh, these tiles are using the volumes, these three tiles, but these six tiles are not. Uh, that's weird. They should always use the volume because we have the checkbox and now it's not. So let's go fix that. And actually the reason why it happens is because we are tracing from the sky all the way to the ground. So now it's touching the volume the first time. So it's setting the real height, but then it's touching something else under it. So now it's using that height instead because we are simply overwriting the return Z right here. Uh, so every time we are looping through a new actor that we touch with the line trace, we are setting the height Z, meaning that the first one sets the value and then the second one overrides the value and then the third one overrides the value another time. But I think that in the case that we want to use the tile height of the volume that we just found, we should not continue to override that value. We just we should just stop. And that's what we're gonna do. And to do that, I'm going to create a new variable. I kept it a boolean and I renamed it is height found. That way we're gonna use that variable to determine if we already found the height or not. And that's how I connected it. So right here, when we find a green modifier volume that we want to use for the tile height, right here we are going to also set the boolean to true. That way, this is going to be the final height of the tile on the grid. Because let's say for this example, we find the volume in the sky and then we are touching the little bridge under it, then the grid modifier here is going to be false. It's going to cast fail because th the little bridge is not a volume. So now it's going to go inside the branch right here. And then it's checking if we find the height. Well, we found the height because it was already above it. It was in the air. So uh, this will be true, right? Here, so it's not going to override the height of the tile. But in the case that we are anywhere else on the grid that doesn't have a volume in the air blocking the line trace, this value is never going to be set to true because it doesn't have a volume in the air. And then uh, we are going to execute uh, this. It's going to execute the false and set the tile height as usual. Anyway, we'll see when it works. Uh, now we just have one last thing to do and it is to make sure that this boolean is false before the for each loop right here. So I'm going to copy the set and paste it right before the for each loop right here and I will make it to false. So uncheck the checkbox, perfect. We can now compile and go back in the level and press play. And now if I generate my grid based on the environment, we can see that all the nine tiles right here are in the air as expected. Perfect, we're done here. And we're technically ready to go back inside the pathfinding and adjust the path based on the cost of all the tiles. But before doing that, I'm just going to do a little something else. Right here, if we zoom, uh, we can see, actually we don't need to zoom, but uh, right here we see that, well, we don't see anything. We don't see that there's a different cost from those tiles here compared to the normal tiles. Same for these tiles right here. They are supposed to be triple cost, but we don't see it in the grid when we are simply displaying it like that. It's the same as the normal tiles. The flying tiles are a little bit different because there's no ground under them, but it will be also nice to know uh, which tiles they are without having to know that, okay, we placed a volume right here, a volume right there, another volume right here. So uh, I'm just going to add some debug text on top of the tiles that are not normal. That way we can identify them. So we're gonna go do that in the debug menu, other debug text and colors on tiles. And we're gonna do that quickly because we know how it works by now. So let's start by adding a new Boolean. I named it a show tile type and now we're gonna go inside the set show tile text to set the value of the boolean. So I can just drag it here, connect it like so, connect it to the beginning of the function and then continue the flow like that. Perfect, now we're gonna go add it inside the one to display any text. So I'm gonna add a new pin right there, connect my show tile type at the end like so. 
And now we have to use it. So I'm gonna go in my update text on tile, go all the way at the end right here where we are setting the indexes and we're gonna insert it right here in the middle. So I'm just going to add another pin like that. And that's how we connect it. So first we check if we want to show the tile type. So if it's true, we are going to show it, but we don't want to show all of them. So we're gonna check right here if it's not equal to normal. So not equal to normal, that way we're not gonna show normal return on all the tiles that are not special. It, it will not be useful for us because it will just spam us with a bunch of useless text. So we are checking if it's not equal to normal. And if so, we are simply adding the tile type converted to a string inside the array. And then we are getting that length for the text length. And that's it, we now just have to go set the variable inside the user interface. So I can just close this blueprint for now. I'm gonna go back in the debug menu in my tabs and open the tab pathfinding. And here I simply added a new checkbox in the debug section right here. I have the show tile type checkbox that I just added right there and I changed the text so it's written show tile types. And now we can go in the graph. And here I'm going to select my checkbox on the left, so checkbox tile types, and I'm going to implement the event like so. Then I will take the event and move it up a little bit right here and connect it with the other ones like that. And now we can take the checkbox on the left, drag it in the graph, copy the is check function just so we can call it also and pass it to the set function right here. And the last thing we have to do is to set the default value of the checkbox. So that is done in the begin play right here. So I'm just going to copy this right here. And then I simply replace the checkbox for the new checkbox, so checkbox style type, and I replace the boolean that we're using for the show tile type boolean. And that's it, we can now compile, save, and close this tab, and we should be able to test it. And now if I generate my grid based on the environment and go in the pathfinding tab, I can check my second checkbox, and now I have text on some tiles right here. If I zoom, okay, so I have uh, these are flying units only, these are double cost uh, flying units, and these ones are triple cost. Perfect. Everything else is normal, so they don't have text on them. And we can uh, obviously show and hide the text if we want. Perfect. We can stop that. And it's now time for the pathfinding, and it's not that difficult to implement, so it should not take too much time. So let's go do that real quick. I'm gonna go in the grid and open the BP grid pathfinding. And here there's actually two things we want to do. First, we want to be able to have different cost per tile, depending on the tile type. And second is to be able to exclude some tiles. So when a unit is uh, trying to walk on the grid and it encounters a tile that is a flying unit only, and that unit is not a flying type, well, we want to be able to exclude that tile because that's just for flying units. So we're gonna do those two things. So let's start with the first one, adding a different cost per tile. And this is going to be in get valid tile neighbor. At the end right here, this is where we are discovering the neighbor. So we're gonna go and set a different cost to enter the tile based on the tile type that we receive right here. And that's how we're gonna do it. So from the cost to enter the tile, we can type select and take the last one at the bottom right here. And then we can connect the data type into it like that. And now we have all the options uh, to set all the cost. So the normal tile is going to be one, the double cost is going to be two, the triple cost is going to be three, and the flying units is going to be one also. Here we go, that's it. And now let's go try this real quick. I'm gonna go back in entry and press play. So here I have my triple cost. So I'm gonna start uh, by doing a tile right here. I'm gonna start a path right here and I want to go all the way up there. So, okay, perfect. Uh, the cost of the path, it's seven at the end right here. We can see on the tile and then it goes like three, six, seven. Okay, it seems to work. And what if I click right here? Okay, it cost eight, that's good. So three, six, seven, eight. And if I cost, click here instead, okay, the path change completely because now it's faster to go all the way around because it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, instead of having to go three, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so that seemed to work for the triple cost. I'm gonna go here for the double cost this time. I'm gonna start the path right here and go there. Okay, uh, my unit can go uh, through the flying unit, so it goes around everything else. Okay, I'm just going to uh, ignore that for now. Okay, good. Uh, so now it goes zero, one, two, three. Okay, that one costs double, and then four, perfect. And if I go here and then there, it prefers going the other way because it's cheaper than going all the way through it. And we can see that there's probably another breakpoint somewhere here. Here we go, instead of going through the middle, it goes around, perfect. So it seems to work, great. And it's now time to do the last thing we want to do, and it is to exclude the flying types when we are not a flying unit. So uh, we're gonna still do it inside this function in the get valid tile neighbor. 
and I'm gonna start by going all the way at the beginning to add a new variable. The variable type is an array of etile types and I named it valid types and now I'm going to compile, it's going to complain but let's don't worry about that for now. And now what I'm gonna do is just zoom out a little bit, go right here where we are checking if the tile is walkable. But in instead of doing that, we're gonna use the new variable we created. So let's get uh, the valid types uh, and then we have to contains the data type. So contains item that we, we are gonna check if the type that we received is a valid type. And then we can pass it uh, in the branch instead of the is tile walkable like that. Okay, that's it. We can now go fix all the errors. So I have one, oh, I just have one right here. Okay, it says that we have to pass it the valid types. And in this case, I'm actually just going to promote it inside a variable. So right click promote to variable. I named it uh, valid tile types and we're going to go set it at the same place we are setting the include diagonal. So I'm just going to right click, find reference on the include diagonal and go where we are setting it. So set include diagonals right here at the beginning. So what I'm gonna do is get my variable, set it right here, and then I'm going to connect it like that, just in between the boolean and the millisecond stuff right here, and then connect it back to the function, which I can then reorganize like so. And then I just rename the variable tile types instead. Perfect, now we have everything we need to feed the tile type to the function. So we have to go where we are calling the find path function, which is inside the find path action. So let's go in the debug menu, action, and open, oh actually no it's not in the debug menu first, it's just in the player action, pathfinding, and then open the find path to target. And for this one we're gonna make it a little bit different than the other one, so I'm going to drag from it and search for select, and pick the select node, and then I'm going to create myself a new boolean, so new variable for new boolean. I renamed it include flying only, and then I'm going to grab it and drop it inside my select like that. And then from the select I'm going to drag and search for make array, and I'm going to add my three elements in there. So the normal tile, the double cost and the triple cost for when you are not flying. And if we are including the flying, well, we are going to include the flying. So let's duplicate that and add a fourth pin for the flying units only like that. And then we can compile and it should now everything be fixed. And now we just have to go set that variable inside the user interface the same way we did for all the other ones. So let's go in entry, go in the debug menu action and open uh, action find path to target. And uh, right here we can add another checkbox. Here you go, I renamed the text so it's written include flying units only and then I change the name of the checkbox also. Now I can select my checkbox, go all the way at the bottom and implement the event, which I will still connect like the other one, just right that, right here. And then I'm going where the cast is, right here, and I'm going to set my variable. So I'm going to drag from this, search for set flying only, like that. I can connect it in between right here. And then I can use my new checkbox, so flying only. I can check if it's checked like so, and I can connect it to my variable just like that. And finally, we just have to make sure that the checkbox visibility is updated as the same time as the other one. So I'm just going to copy paste it right here, connect it to the set visibility, and right here, same thing, connect it. And now we can compile, save, and everything should be fine. So now if we press play, oh, okay, we have another error. Okay, let's open that one. So it's inside action show tile neighbor and the error is right here. Okay, we are calling that function and we're not passing any array right here. So we can just simply make an array, so make array. And in this case, I will include all the tile types. So I'm just going to do that. And I'm going to include normal, double cost, triple cost, and flying units only also. Like that, we should be able to compile save. And now we should be able to play. And now if I try to draw a path where the flying tiles are, so I'm going to select my action and then try to draw a path. Okay, it goes around this time. Perfect. It always goes around all the holes. Perfect. And now if I check my checkbox, so include flying unit only. Here we go. Now it goes through the holes. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. So now we have a way to differentiate between the tiles that can be walked on by flying units and the ones that are walking. And we can obviously do the same thing for any type of ground or any type of unit. So maybe we have a fish that cannot walk on land, but it can only swim or stuff like that. So uh, we are able to handle everything if we want to. Perfect. 
Oh, actually, I just found a little bug and we're gonna fix it before I end the video. So right now, if I try to find a path from here, let's say, without my checkbox for the flying unit checked, and I try to find a path, you can see the FPS in the top right corner, it's perfect, so it doesn't matter, it's all good. But now, what if I try to find a path to the tiles that are unworkable for that unit because they are for the flying units only? Here we go, we can see that the FPS is super low, and this is because it still tries to find a path to that tile even though it can't enter it. And so, it goes through all the tiles of the grid until it finds a path to that specific tile, which is just not possible because we can't enter it. So we're just going to disable the path in the case that we can't reach the target. So let's go do that real quick. And we're gonna do that inside the BP grid pathfinding in the is input data valid function because this is exactly where we are checking if the stock tile is workable, the target tile is workable, and now we're gonna make sure that the target tile is also part of the valid tile types. And we're doing it just like that, so at the end of the function we are getting the tiles from the grid tiles, getting the type, checking if it is contained inside the valid tile types, which will mean that the tile is valid, and in this case we are returning true. But if the tile is not in there, which is meaning that the tile is not valid, so we're simply going to return false in that case. So perfect, we can now compile and go see if it fixes the problem. Okay, so now I'm back on my grid and I try to draw a path, perfect, my FPS is good, and now if I try to draw a path on those, so I have my right click uh, old, uh, so it should draw a path, but it doesn't, so perfect, it doesn't even try to generate a path, because we can't enter those tiles. Perfect, it fixed the bug. And that's actually everything I had for today, so yeah, that's good, because the last few videos were pretty long, so it feels great to have a shorter video this time, so good, and I'm gonna see you in the next one, so bye bye!